This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin is melting up and talk a little bit about what I'm expecting for the fourth quarter for Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin seems to have these three modes. There's crashing Bitcoin, which really uh, flushes out the weak hands. There's really boring Bitcoin, where Bitcoin is range bound and everyone makes fun of it and says that it's putting them to sleep. And then there's face melting Bitcoin, which we really only see at this point in the cycle. We're entering the uh, sort of the end of the 12 to 18 month period following the halving. And this is when we get the melt ups uh, as we did in 2013 and 2014, as well as the end of 2017. It would seem that Bitcoin, like many markets, will do at any point in time, whatever causes the maximum amount of pain to the most people. And it appears that face melting Bitcoin is what is going to uh, cause a lot of envy and a lot of pain this time around. Right as we entered October 1st, we had Bitcoin melting up more than it has since July. And a lot of people who haven't been in institutional finance, as I have, underestimate the, the power and the importance of calendar effects when it comes to large institutional investors. It's very easy to have a situation where you cannot invest in something on September 30th, but then as soon as you get the new money flowing into your fund, or as soon as uh, you get some sort of approval, or as soon as it's a new month, you can invest. So this is what appears to have happened. And this can also work for quarters as well, where you can't invest in the third quarter, but all of a sudden you have permission or you have the capital to invest in the fourth quarter. So this is really what happened right as we entered October, the beginning of the new month and the new quarter, Bitcoin began to melt up, now trading above $47,000. And in the process, it is breached uh, to the upside, it is breached both the 200-day moving average, which is the red line, as well as the 50-day moving average, which is the blue line. A couple of weeks ago, we already talked about the bullish moving average crossover that's called a golden cross that we've gotten. And so things are looking good. We're still in sort of a sideways, uh, sideways trading channel. That being said, I think we're going to be seeing huge institutional and retail flows this quarter. It's hard to see besides these calendar effects what's driving this, though Chairman Powell yesterday did say in congressional, ter uh, congressional testimony that he has no intention of banning Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency, though he did confirm that he wants to bring stable coins under the umbrella of regulation. Now, uh, Plan B, whom we've t spoken about many times on this channel, he has a, uh, a price target model for Bitcoin that uses the uh, stock to flow, in other words, the scarcity of Bitcoin. And he also has another model that's based on on-chain data. Here's a tweet that he sent out in June, on, on June 20th. And it's really mis mysterious, actually, uh, how well this has been working. So he said that the worst case scenario for 2021, uh, for August, would be 47,000. And then for September, it would be 43,000. These are the, the worst case scenarios, scenarios in terms of a monthly closing price. Yesterday, we closed right about right at 43,000, just as we did at 47,000. So this is this is almost close to voodoo. This is pretty pretty amazing. But what's even more amazing is his floors for the next three months. The floor for October, in terms of where we should close, should be at least 63,000. For November, it should be at least $98,000 per Bitcoin. And then for December 31st, at least $135,000 uh, per Bitcoin. Again, this has nothing to do as he points out here, this has nothing to do with the stock to flow model. This is a price and on-chain data model that looks at worst case scenarios. September is historically a, uh, a down month and a weak month, both for Bitcoin and for stocks. The fourth quarter tends to be very strong in terms of seasonal effects. In other news, El Salvador has just started mining Bitcoin using the geothermal energy that's produced from volcanoes. Uh, people who say that Bitcoin wastes energy. This is energy that would otherwise uh, not really be used for anything. Could be used, I suppose, to heat uh, heat your hot water or something like that, or, or to generate electricity as well. But this shows uh, just another way that Bitcoin enables stranded energy to be used to secure the system. It looks like they've only mined a, f a few fractions of a Bitcoin, something like 
I think this article said it's about $269 worth of Bitcoin, but this is a start. And uh, it's, I think it's a very powerful meme as well. Returning to plan B, you can read this. This was his first paper that was very influential in 2019, where he models Bitcoin over the next, uh, the next couple decades in terms of the flow of new Bitcoin from miners compared to the existing stock or inventory of Bitcoin. There's a Twitter account you can follow, S2F Multiple, that looks at a smooth version of this. So it looks at the stock to flow multiple. It smooths it over 463 days using a 463 day moving average and then comes up with a model price. So this is already uh, a couple hours old. The actual price is now $47,000, but the model price is already over $100,000. So we have the floor price, which would be in this model. And then we have the, uh, the price targets, which would be in this model that's based on this paper. There are, a couple, there are a couple versions of it, and I do talk about this in other YouTube videos. But this is the fair model price for Bitcoin right now. And as such, uh, especially entering the fourth quarter here, and we've, we've exited the period of seasonal weakness, this is when you would expect the actual price of Bitcoin to, co to converge to the model price. If we look at his uh, stock to flow cross asset model, which prices Bitcoin in terms of other major asset classes like gold and real estate, we end up with a price target for this cycle uh, of 2020 to 2024 of $288,000 per Bitcoin. And again, these having cycles, they tend to be more bullish in the first two years, first 12 to 18 to 24 months of the halving cycle. And so this is one reason I would suggest that we're going to see $288,000 by uh, sometime in either this year or in 2022. You'd expect it to be at the front end of the halving cycle. My price target for 2021 is still $200,000. This still seems unbelievable to a lot of people, but when you realize how much Bitcoin can move overnight, move 8% here, 10% there, pretty soon you get to $200,000 uh, before you know it. And what really matters here is, is the demand. Bitcoin is extremely scarce. There's been a lot of money flowing off the exchanges, Bitcoin being withdrawn from exchanges and put into cold storage. And the existing flow to Bitcoin, I believe, is much thinner than anyone believes. This is what happened with GameStop and AMC. When you have a very small float and or a lot of shorts, you can, you can really have face melting moves. And I think this is what's gonna happen in this quarter with Bitcoin as a way of confirming and moving back toward the model price. The most important exchange rate though to remember is though that one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. We need to start thinking about Bitcoin in terms of a unit of account where you begin to price everything in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the reason you should use this exchange rate comparing it to itself is simply because Bitcoin is a very unique animal. It's the hardest, scarcest form of money ever. It's the most decentralized form of money ever. You can come out with a new coin and call it decentralized in your marketing, but that doesn't make it decentralized. That's just magical uh, cargo cult thinking. Bitcoin is the apex predator of money. This means it's the top of the food chain and it will devour everything. If your altcoin, your other cryptocurrency does something cool, besides just enrich the VCs and insiders who started it, that altcoin will eventually die and it will end up, whatever thing that it does cool, will end up as a feature on Bitcoin, whether it's a privacy feature or speed feature, etc., whether it's smart contracts, etc., your altcoin will die and it will end up as just being another feature that's added to Bitcoin. And this makes sense because if you're building a new financial system, if you're building a new form of money, it has to be neutral. If it's not decentralized, it cannot be neutral. Centralized currencies are controlled by insiders and we know what that looks like. We know what the Federal Reserve and its money printer and Wall Street looks like. We don't want another version of that with Vitalik Buterin at the helm. I think he'd be even worse than Jerome Powell. Only Bitcoin offers a firm foundation for decentralized finance. And this is not even being priced into Bitcoin right now, as is Bitcoin as a store of value. None of these things are priced in yet in terms of the future use cases. By comparison, if you look at some of the DeFi protocols like Compound, 
for example, which is like a, um, it's basically like a money market protocol that allows you to earn interest. These things are very fragile. They're interesting experiments, but they will all end up being uh, future features on Bitcoin. And these, these tokens will be worthless. I'll give you a complete, a perfect example of why DeFi built on Ethereum is fake. Here we have Robert Leshner, who is the founder and creator of Compound, which is a protocol that runs, it's a DeFi protocol that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. Here's a tweet from yesterday. It looks like their protocol had another error. It distributed uh, it distributed tokens to people who weren't supposed to have it, uh, in many cases, millions of dollars worth of tokens. And he's now asking people uh, to return the, the tokens that they got uh, saying you can keep 10% as, as, as a bonus. But here's the really interesting thing. This, here's a DeFi protocol that's supposedly completely independent, runs on its own. And here, uh, he, Robert Leshner really lets the, uh, lets the veil slip. If you don't return this compound, if you don't return your comp, it's going to be reported as income to the IRS and most of you are doxxed. This really gives the lie to the fact that these DeFi protocols are anonymous and decentralized. Here you are being threatened by the CEO and founder of one of the protocols. This protocol is not decentralized. It has a it has a founder, it has a legal team, it has a headquarters. They're gonna receive a knock on the door from Jerome Powell and Gary Gensler one of these days as well uh, because they basically issued unregistered securities. But in the meantime, they're actually threatening their users. When you compare Robert Leshner, who seems like pond scum compared to someone like Satoshi Nakamoto, you have to really ask yourself, do you want this to be the new financial system where you're basically being threatened by a centralized force that says they can dox you, they can reveal your identity. Compound, as we said, is a fragile, broken protocol. Not only did it have this protocol error, but then the CEO gets on and starts threatening the users. It's run by a founder who says that he can report you to the IRS and says that no one has anonymity on the platform, hence his ability to dox you. This is very centralized, and this is not what I want the new financial system to look like. This is already a captured protocol, just as Ethereum itself is a captured protocol. Vitalik Buterin can be co-opted and his system of money can be co-opted. So DeFi is a lie. The true decentralized finance will be built on top of Bitcoin, and this will increase adoption even more. This is how we get to $200,000, $300,000 per Bitcoin in just a few months as people begin to figure this out. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.